Howdy there, folks. This is Quinn, that snazzy iPhone guy, and this is my live broadcast. This was kind of spontaneous, spur of the moment, so we don't have a whole lot of people in here, but it should be a lot of fun nonetheless, and there's good information even if you're watching it uh, post de facto on YouTube. So welcome, glad to have you. Hope all is well. I want to talk about a few things before we uh, get started with user questions and the like. First of all, I kind of want to preface the whole episode and really what my whole last several weeks have been about is 90 second tech. Now, I know a lot of you know about this, but there are a surprising amount of people, too many people that have no idea. Now, 90 second tech is not what it used to be. If you're thinking on oh, 90 second tech, the, uh, the place where Quinn used to do 90 second tech reviews, not it. This is not the same thing. Uh, I kind of restarted from scratch one. And really what I decided was people do not read and consume media like they used to. They don't consume news like the traditional method. Now, obviously there's still people that read the newspaper and uh, there's a lot of people that read blogs, but even some people don't like doing that. They all want video consumption, something that's short, concise, yet informative. And that's what 90 Second uh, Tech aims to fill. I hope that in 90 seconds, it was a little bit more today, it was about two minutes. I'm still like a noob, we're trying to narrow things in. Uh, Hank Wu from uh, Logically Technology is helping me uh, write scripts and so he's a lot of help, but we're still kind of tr trying to figure out exactly how we want to do this. But uh, it's quite professional and like I said, you get a lot of today's tech news uh, every day, Monday through Friday, you know, in 90 seconds. So that's awesome. You don't have to read Engadget four times a day. You don't have to go to Gizmodo. You don't have to go to CNN to see the top tech news. Uh, you can just go to youtube.com slash 90 second tech and find all of it right there. So that that's 90 second tech. If you don't care, that's fine. If you're kind of interested, I would love for you to check it out. There is an annotation on the screen right now, or there's also a link below. And uh, there you go. So that's 90 second tech. Now, today there was some news about Samsung um, not Samsung, what am I thinking? Sprint filing a conjunction against the AT&T T-Mobile merger. Now, if not all of us know, the Department of Justice uh, filed the same complaint last week saying that the merger would be anti-competitive, uh, you create a duopoly and a bunch of other things. And Sprint is basically rehashing this. But one has to have at least a little bit of sympathy for Sprint. Verizon is the number one carrier by like 20 million subscribers or something crazy. Uh, AT&T is number two. And then Sprint and T-Mobile are really like chicken scratch. They're nothing that big. I mean, yeah, they're big. They're part of the big four, but they're not, you know, anything gigantic. Um, and so when AT&T acquires said T-Mobile, that would make them the largest cell carrier with Verizon not far behind. Both of them having well over 100 million subscribers. At least I think that's right. I think that's right which means that the little 40 million subscriber Sprint is tiny now. They're almost irrelevant. And uh, even though their infrastructures are bigger, AT&T and Verizon have a larger customer base, thusly allowing them to lower prices and uh, you know do all this other stuff that Sprint may not be capable of doing. And so they filed a complaint today saying that the merger should not happen. And uh, you know obviously for good reasons, but I mean, again, they don't want to um, be the, the lowly cell provider in the States. But I would have to agree with the Department of Justice in Sprint. As much as I'd like my iPhone to get better, and as much as I'd like AT&T service to be expanded to 97% of the country with this acquisition of T-Mobile and uh, you know the ability for them to expand their infrastructure, I really don't want there to be less than the already few for major companies. If you go to Europe, if you go to essentially anywhere else in the world, there are dozens of telecoms, dozens. And usually there's four, five, six, seven big ones. Like in uh, the UK, there's three, there's Orange, there's O2, uh, there's Vodafone, there's a couple others, there's T-Mobile in Germany. It, like there are six or seven big, big cell carriers and then like 15 small cell carriers. Here in the United States, we have Verizon, Sprint, T-Mobile, and AT&T, the four big ones. And then we have small ones like Cricket, Boost Mobile, and that's like it. We have fewer than 10 cell providers. And so we don't have a lot in the first case. And honestly, as much as you like your carrier, as much as you say, no, T-Mobile, don't get bought because you have great customer support. Every single one of these telecoms sucks, hardcore. They want to screw you. They don't care about you. They want your money. And so for that reason, I'm like, well, who cares about AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, and Sprint? They're all awful. None of them care about us as customers. We should 
have the ability to create a super competitive market. If the US had a competitive cell market with good prices, expanding infrastructures, it'd be a lot better. And with this acquisition, it's gonna become even less important for them to expand. And uh, I'm very, very much against it, even though I know that with the merger, my current uh, AT&T service will improve. So I'm against it, uh, but leave in the comments below what you think about that. Uh, that'd be awesome to know. Um, yeah, people are saying in the chat, there's Virgin Mobile, there's US Cellular, uh, US Cellular, there's a few. I mean, we I'm not saying we don't have carriers, but we really do have four major ones, and then the rest are very regional, and then there's these weird charges when you are not in their service area. So, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of issues. But aside that, you guys know what I'm talking about. All right, so let's, uh, let's see. Let's go to text questions. See what uh, the fans and the people in the chat believe. Uh, here we go, here we go. La -dee -da -dee -da -dee -da. Okay, it's damn task, it's damn task. It's been a long night. P.S. TSIG viewers, you will see some videos tomorrow and the rest of this week. I'm gonna try and get back into my regular five day a week schedule, okay? So if you're like, Quinn, what's happening to you? Don't worry, I'm coming back. I uh, vacation. Went on break. I went boating, wakeboarding down in Lake Mead. It was beautiful. Loved it. And uh, I'm back and ready to stay. So, this is a question I get a lot MacBook Pro or iMac? Uh, and uh, blah, blah, blah. Flash, so, what do you think? Well, um, it depends. It really is like apples and oranges. It depends on what you want. You know, um, I can't really tell you. I have right here an i7 2011 MacBook Pro, 15 inch, uh, the 2.2 gigahertz. Um, it has eight gigabytes of RAM, an internal SSD, an internal hard drive. It is pretty loaded for a MacBook Pro. But that being said, you can get a much better value out of an iMac. So you get better reliability, better performance for less money. And uh, obviously you get that 27 inch display out of the iMac. Now, with a 15 inch MacBook Pro, you get portability. You get, that's pretty much it, you get portability. So it depends. I mean, if you're not gonna be taking your MacBook Pro around, if you just are gonna leave it on your desk, get an iMac. But if you want the ability to walk around your house and use your MacBook or use it on campus, obviously you would want a laptop. If it's staying at your desk, it's not moving, get an iMac. But if you're using it in your day-to-day -day life, MacBook Pro. So, I mean, it really is apples and oranges. You have to decide kind of which one is for you. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> what color is your room? I'm not trying to be creepy, I like it. You don't really know. This camera doesn't portray it very well. It's not as yellow as it's pictured here. Um, it's like a cream, kind of orangey almost I don't know and then on my back wall right there I have a really really dark green which I love and complements my brown bed which I'm not going to show you because my room is disastrously messy but I don't know if you want the color code follow me on Twitter and I'll find it one of these days I'll find the bare paint bucket cool 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 La -dee -da -dee -da. Ba -da -ba -ba -da. You said you got a teleprompter or teleprompter glass or something. Where did you buy it and is it worth it? So yes, this is part of 90 Second Tech. I did buy teleprompter glass because everything on 90 Second Tech is scripted. I can't ad lib stuff in 90 seconds. It's just not practical and not possible as much as I'd like to think that I'm some phenomenal YouTuber. I'm not capable of such a thing. And uh, so I did buy teleprompter glass because right now I just set my MacBook Pro below the camera, but you can kind of see I'm reading it and I want to make it look a little bit more professional. And uh, so I did order teleprompter class. Um, it was kind of expensive. It was like 175 bucks for eight inches, but that's good stuff. So I didn't buy like the mount or the monitor or anything. I'm just gonna use my MacBook Pro uh, or maybe even my touchpad. There's a great teleprompter touchpad app. Uh, it's actually a web app, but it works great on the touchpad. And that way I can scroll through my text while being about 10 feet away from where I'm shooting. Um, I'm currently using some teleprompter software on my Mac. It's uh, called ProPrompter. I haven't bought it yet. I'm just using the trial version. So we'll see. But I did buy some glass so that I can uh, see the words, but also have the camera shine through it so it looks like I'm giving you guys eye contact. So I don't know if it's worth it yet. 
And I actually don't remember where I bought it. I'll, I'll put that below in the show notes on YouTube if I find it. Again, MacBook Pro or MacBook Air? Matt's Macintosh has it and he has Final Cut 10 and Photoshop After Effects on the Pro or Air. It's kind of oddly worded. Um, on the new MacBook Airs, not mine. Mine is the old 2010 model that doesn't have the fancy i5 and i7 processors. But on the new models, you are capable of running some pretty heavy duty software. Whether you'd want to is debatable. You're not gonna get as much power out of this computer. Uh, you're much better off getting a MacBook Pro if you're looking for some heavy duty processing. I've said this and even though the specs on the new MacBook Airs are really nice and even though they're fast, for pure power raw housing, this is not it. Now the SSD makes this really fast at loading things and the application opens nicely, but when you're rendering a 500 megabyte video, the MacBook Pro is gonna blow the air out of the water. It just will. So, you know, it, it really depends. If you're just gonna be doing email, web browsing, some light Photoshopping, this is great. If you're gonna be doing like hardcore Final Cut Express, uh, After Effects, get a higher end Macintosh, a MacBook Pro, 15 inch i7 that's what i have it works great so you know again power over portability and function what microphones in the sub 200 dollars range would you recommend to youtube voiceovers for youtube voiceovers rather well there's a few uh the first one would be one that's sitting in front of me uh is actually the yeti pro um and let me help that one for you it's right here a review on this is coming very soon, but as you can see, it has a very, very rich, nice noise. You're watching the live broadcast of 90 Second Tech. This video is sponsored by Telestream.net, the providers of... So as you can see, it's a lot more rich. It's a lot nicer than um, some standard microphones out there. By the way, this, this live stream actually is sponsored by Telestream.net. They're the great creators of ScreenFlow, which if you're watching this on YouTube is how this broadcast is there. They create Wirecast, which is excellent for live streaming, which I'm not utilizing right now because this is said lazy stream, but um, they make great stuff. Highly recommend it. Check them out. That was cool. Okay, so my Xbox 360 Touch, like the new one, the Slim, whatever, um, I got that. And the eject button is Chrome, but it looks green for a minute because I have a green pencil sitting here. And no, it's probably the gigantic green screen I have over there. And so it looks like it's an LED, but it's not. Much less cool than I expected. Anyway, that was random. Uh, back to microphones. Uh, we have the uh, Audio-Technica ATH 2020. Still one of the best mics under uh, $200 and uh, it's quite cheap. It's about 125 bucks for the XLR version. If you want the USB version, it's like 150, 175. Excellent, 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 excellent mic right here. Absolutely brilliant. Um, but other than that, the Blue Spark, uh, the Shure PG42, I think that's in the $250 range. But um, you can find stuff online for pretty good, pretty good values. And so anything from Blue is great. Uh, anything from Audio Technica is pretty great. And uh, I like the Shure PG42. I'm not a fan of uh, most Shure stuff, but the PG42 is a great condenser mic. And if you are doing voiceovers on YouTube, if you really want that rich sound, you will want a condenser microphone versus a dynamic microphone. So. Cool. Should I wait for the iPad 3? Well, depends. <laughs> uh, the iPad 2 has been out for about six months, a little less, and uh, the iPad 3 will probably be available in about six months. So if you're like super antsy, I wouldn't get one. I mean, I would get one. It's great. You can resell it in a year for I mean, it, you can resell it before the iPad 3 comes out for quite a bit of money. Uh, the resale value on iPads stays rather high. Fun fact, the uh, resale value on white iPads is higher than that of black iPads. So if you want to be able to sell it in six months and you want to be able to get like 20 or 30 bucks more out of your iPad, white. Fun tip. Uh, also, that's about it. Um, Retina displays may be coming next year. Slight bump in processor speed. I don't see a whole lot like that's super must have. The retina would be nice. If the retina is is a big deal. If there's no retina, if it's like another iPad 2 upgrade, little thinner, little nicer, better battery life, camera, I don't know, just get it now. So I'd get it now. 
And uh, before the iPad 3 is announced in February or March, uh, sell it. And then wait. I don't know. Why not? It's fun. They're great. I love iPads. Pick one up if you can. Where did you get the name That Snazzy iPhone Guy? And uh, what's up with Snazzy? What's it come from? Well, that's a great question. Uh, people ask me this quite a bit. And, uh, you know, I have, um, I have a story for almost every YouTube experience I've had. They've been like, well, how did you get accepted a partner? Fact of the matter is, I was denied three times. How did you get your first subs? Um, like, fun facts about that, whatever, right? Actually, the first 50 subs I got, I hand wrote a personal thank you letter by a PM. It was cool. But, uh, yeah, I mean... I really, that's the only thing I can't remember. I don't remember where I came up with my name, how I came up with it, what caused me to come up with it. I don't know. Snazzy is a word I've used for quite some time. I actually used it in uh, mockery for quite a while. Some of you like, oh, that's snazzy. as a joke. And then I was like, hey, that's a good name. So I chose it. So, you know, that's cool. Uh, that's about it, man. It's about, oh, here's one last one. Uh, have you tried or thought about making a Hackintosh? I built one that rivals the high-end iMac for $800. Yes, Hackintoshes are great. If you have the resources and if you're not scared to build your own PC, Hackintoshes are absolutely brilliant. I almost bought a home theater, well, I almost built uh, my own Hackintosh, like an HTPC. I was going to put it downstairs in our media room and uh, run XMBC on it, but I also wanted to load OS X onto it. And I built... I had like the parts in my shopping cart ready to buy and I decided not to and get this instead for school. But um, I, it was like 480 bucks and the specs were as good as the low end Mac, which is $1,000. So you can build Macs for cheap. Uh, you do need to make sure parts are compatible. And I mean, there's problems with Hackintosh. First of all, you have to build the PC. If you're not comfortable doing that, it's not something you're gonna wanna be doing. Uh, you have to be able to get down and dirty with thermal paste and uh, get the CPU on the motherboard and then assemble it accordingly and put the heat sink on the, you know. So there's a lot of stuff you have to do. Um, it's relatively easy. I mean, you don't need a ton of skill uh, to build your own PC. You do need patience because there's a lot of things that don't work and it's really frustrating. And it just takes some troubleshooting to figure out. But yeah, I mean, if you're looking to build a Mac and you don't need the glorious Apple logo on it, um, that's the other thing is like all... HTPC or all Hackintoshes are very ugly. I mean, you can get one with a nice PC case, but it's still going to be uglier than a Mac. That's why Macs are beautiful. But uh, I mean, if you're looking for a low budget Mac that still performs nicely, Hackintosh is totally the way to go. But you do have compatibility issues sometimes, especially with some parts. Like there's a few builds that don't have Wi-Fi. Pretty critical aspect of a computer. Um, I guess if you're wired Ethernet, it doesn't matter. But you know, th there's some shortcomings. Uh, you have to be careful when you update software. I, I mean, it's certainly not for the average Joe. If you're not comfortable getting down and dirty with a computer, not only building it, but also maintaining it, Hackintosh isn't for you. But if you want the fun of building a computer, which is why I almost bought mine, not so much because I wanted to save money, but you can save about 50 to 75% building your own Mac. So if you're interested in Hackintosh, you can just Google it. There's tons of great websites. Uh, that help you do it like hackintosh.org and the, i mean the there's great forms that'll tell you these parts are compatible no this doesn't work you have to be careful with this all that other stuff it's great i mean the hackintosh online community is like on par with the jailbreak community online there are just tons and tons of people that are willing to help you out so that'll do it for this uh live stream i very much appreciate you for watching and uh coming to the live stream if you're here present if you're on youtube thanks for watching these several minutes I greatly appreciate you. Check out 90 Second Tech. And uh, as always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks.